So I saw The Flash this weekend and it was cute. I left the theater feeling partially entertained and slightly underwhelmed. And it's nice to know that I'm not alone in that feeling. So yeah, it looks like The Flash is going to flop, making that the third DC-based comic book movie to flop in the last year, with the first two being Black Adam and Shazam 2. And that's saying a lot because both of those movies sucked. And I've got to say in all honesty, um, it's the biggest piece of dog shit. And I really hope we don't go 4 for 4 with Blue Beetle launching this summer because I'm genuinely excited for that film. The Flash is the 13th installment in the DCEU, directed by Andy Muschietti and starring Ezra Miller. But we'll get to them in a second. The movie gives us our first look at Barry Allen, The Flash, as the leading character of a comic book movie, after being introduced to him in the Justice League movie where he was pretty much just a side character for all intents and purposes. In the movie, Barry Allen has to come to terms with his powers that have granted him the ability to explore multiversal scenarios, which allows him to literally see himself in another life, fight poorly constructed villains, and grapple with the dilemma of selfishly saving your loved one if that means causing infinite and permanent damage to the already existing timeline. The film is based on the Flashpoint storyline from 2011, which is a DC crossover multiverse-based comic series where Bruce Wayne never becomes Batman, his dad does, Superman isn't the main hero, Cyborg is, and Wonder Woman and Aquaman are at war with each other and basically destroy Europe. Pretty cool stuff, but I don't know if I would base the debut Flash movie off that storyline. Seems like a lot and puts a lot of the responsibility on the fans and the moviegoers to have some sort of familiarity already. On paper, the movie sounds pretty cool. The comedy landed pretty well throughout and the concept of the Flash's speed and powers were displayed pretty well graphically. And Ezra gave what I thought was a solid performance. But other than that, the movie just didn't land for me. Whether it be the really eh CGI at moments, poorly constructed villains or the fact that the best part of the movie was a cameo that everyone already knew about because Warner Brothers had to do everything in their power to oversell this movie. And I would have gone crazy in the theater seeing Michael Keaton as Batman because nostalgia, but that was spoiled in an attempt to oversell the film. Like I said earlier, the movie is flopping, but why? I think there's a few reasons. I think that folks are collectively experiencing DCEU fatigue the DC comic book movies have worn their welcome with the collective public. We don't trust them anymore. The studio feels the need to oversell their movies because it's as if they don't even trust their own product. Look how Black Adam was sold to us. And the movie, like I said, was trash. And it's no secret that The Flash is one of the last DCEU movies due to the universe and all canonical storylines that we spent the last decade watching being scrapped for James Gunn's new DCU, which won't even be starting until July 11th, 2025, which is the release date of Superman Legacy. And with all that being said, what's the point of the Blue Beetle movie then? Anyway, you'll hear people say that folks have comic book movie fatigue, which I think is false. People still want to watch comic book movies and properties, but they want to watch good ones. They want to watch depictions of their favorite characters with passion infused into them. You can tell which movies were made with passion and which weren't. That's why people love the Spider-Verse movies so much, because they're clearly a labor of love. I saw Across the Spider-Verse for a second time yesterday and saw The Flash the day before, and these are both movies that deal with the multiverse and the dilemmas of wanting to save your loved ones at the expense of millions of other lives. And Spider-Verse just did it better. Not to mention, The Flash dropping two weeks after Across the Spider-Verse did the movie no favors. I'm just saying, if studios are going to milk this whole multiverse concept for the next five years, then they need to do it correctly and compellingly. 
The same way you can take a novelty movie concept like massive superhero team-ups that was first introduced to us by the OG Avengers movie 10 years ago, there's a correct way to do these movies and a wrong way. And lastly, I think this movie flopped because of what I'm gonna call EMK, Ezra Miller Karma. It's ironic that the Flash film deals with the multiverse because it's almost like Ezra Miller has been experiencing a multiverse of their own over the last several years. Here's a quick summary. In 2019, Ezra Miller was a part of two productions, a feminist thriller called Asking For It and then another limited series called The Stand. And during his time on the sets of both of these productions, he displayed erratic behavior, incessantly screeching, spitting, and interrupting the director by screaming during filming. And Ezra made people on set feel wildly unsafe. In 2020, Ezra Miller went on a rampage through Iceland. Ezra was working on the set of Fantastic Beasts The Secrets of Dumbledore in 2020 when it was shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Ezra then rented an Airbnb in Iceland and invited artists, spiritual advisors, and friends. And a woman who visited claims that it felt like a commune. It felt like the guests were being hypnotized. And guests said that Ezra would give long speeches about spirituality, exhibit crazy mood swings, and would get angry and seem very violent when people would try to leave the residence. In April of 2020, a video released of Ezra Miller appearing to choke a woman outside a bar in Iceland, and the video went viral. The woman said that she thought she and Ezra were just playing fun and games. She told authorities that after joking with Ezra that she could take Ezra in a fight, the situation escalated. Ezra took the jokes about a fight seriously, and the woman said that Ezra then got on top of her, choked her, and screamed in her face if she still wanted to fight. No charges were pressed, but it still happened. In April of 2020, an 18-year-old girl claimed that she spent time with Ezra Miller while they were still in Iceland. And Ezra professed love for her and then exhibited crazy mood swings and took her through what she called psychological abuse. Then, in 2022, Ezra Miller was arrested several times in Hawaii when they were charged for obstructing justice, blocking traffic, disorderly conduct, and Ezra was later arrested and released on $500 bail. And then on March 29th of that year, a couple says that Ezra Miller broke into their house, threatened to kill them, and stole a passport and a wallet from them. And Ezra Miller was arrested again in April of 2022 on charges of second-degree assault when Ezra allegedly refused to leave a residence. And then probably the most jarring incident took place between 2021 and 2022 when Ezra Miller was accused of grooming a young Native American girl whom he had met at the age of 12, but she turned 18 in 2022 and apparently ran off with Ezra Miller. And it came off to her parents as kidnapping. The family of another girl was granted a protection order and then, finally, in August of 2022, Ezra Miller was charged with felony burglary in Vermont and accused of taking several bottles of alcohol from an unoccupied residence in May. Ezra would go on to release a statement saying that they that all of this tied back to mental health issues that, that needed to be treated. Ezra would plead not guilty to the aforementioned felony burglary charges in Vermont, which could have thrown a 26-year prison sentence. But Ezra ended up taking a plea deal to avoid jail time sentenced to a $500 fine and a year of probation, and also agreed to 41 conditions of the deal, including no drinking, random drug tests, and a commitment to seeking mental health treatment. Whew. And all this led to the producers of the movie having to come out and fan the flames of public outcry because people wanted the movie pulled and were threatening boycotts. This also led to Ezra Miller making only one public appearance for the movie at a June 12th premiere of The Flash in Hollywood. Your main star not doing any press because of the massive legal troubles they've been in, the co-stars also not doing a lot of press because of other obligations, and also the troubles of the main star, and an active writer guilt strike that makes it impossible to do any type of press tour on late night talk shows. All of this is probably adding to the movie being unsuccessful. I think these are the facts. Ezra Miller is a deeply troubled person with some personal and mental health issues that need to be addressed expeditiously. But also, I think there was a responsibility for the studio to step out in front of all of this in a better way, even possibly recasting Ezra Miller. Because let's be honest, Ezra isn't the best Flash. Like you look at Robert Downey Jr., and that is Iron Man. Same with Chris Hemsworth and Thor, Chadwick Boseman and T'Challa, Henry Cavill and Superman, and so on and so forth. 
I don't get the same emotion with Ezra and The Flash. But hey, I'm not a casting director. I'm just a guy with a microphone and a YouTube channel. But the powers that be doubled down and pushed the idea that this was one of the best comic book movies ever made, which it wasn't. Not even close. This all speaks to the way that business in America and our society is done. How much does a dollar cost? What are you willing to sacrifice for success? Warner Brothers asked that question, and they got their answer. These were my takeaways and a bit of a deeper commentary of the lack of success of this film. What did you think of The Flash? What's your thought on the Ezra Miller timeline and the future of the DC movies? Answer in the comments below because engagement. And as always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. But no, seriously, what the f is gonna happen with Blue Beetle? Am I seriously getting excited for nothing? Someone needs to save the day and fix this mess. Y'all tell Warner Brothers to call me. I look amazing in red spandex.